Hello my friends, welcome to my channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you're a returning guest. My name is Brittany and on this channel I share my stupid opinions about the books I've been reading. Today's stupid opinion is on The Resort by Sarah Oaks. This was my February book of the month selection. I actually read it in February, if you can believe that. Let's talk about the cop pile of it all. I rate books following the cop pile system created by G over at Book Roast. We're gonna talk about all aspects of cop pile and rate them one through 10. If you're gonna survive your stay at the Koh Sang Resort in Thailand, you're gonna have to follow three rules. The rules are leave your past in the past, always be careful of who you trust, and if some someone discovers who you really are, you're gonna need to run. So Cass is our main character and she arrives on this island in Thailand. That's like the world famous party island in a state of desperation because she is really searching for an escape from her past. Her past full of dark secrets and Koh Sang is the perfect place for her to hide. We are flashing forward a few years. Cass is now a dive instructor at the world famous Koh Sang Resort. Sort. She's also become a member of what are referred to as the permanents. Now the permanents are people who have decided to make this island their home. They're all expats who have arrived to Thailand to make this island their home. The permanents like key trait is that they don't fixate on who they were before they arrived to the island. They're all here to kind of turn over a new leaf and move forward. Like Cass, everybody's out running something. We're kind of picking up on the nights leading up to the full moon party, which is like a huge party on these islands. In the aftermath of one of the full moon parties, one of Cass's dive students is found dead. And we're trying to figure out who did it because paradise on this island is about to come crashing down around everybody in the aftermath of this death. That's because Cass's dive student is not the first mysterious death that's taken place on the island. And it's kind of like bodies are piling up on the island. And it's not like it's one and then a few years later it's another. It's like they're rapidly piling up in quick succession. Someone on the island knows Cass's true identity and they're there to make sure that justice is served. So I really, really, really highly recommend that you check some content warnings on this book. I did not and I probably should have, but it's okay. Cass is one of the characters from which the story is told. She's one of the main POVs. She is hiding super, super like dark secrets from her past from everyone on the island. And that does include her fiance. We, the reader, know she has flashbacks of the past. It's really not clear what's happening with Cass until we get closer to the end. Brooke is the second POV. She is a travel blogger, mostly via Instagram. Her handle is so cute, uh, at Brooke a trip. Love that. She and Cass kind of hit it off immediately upon meeting, and it seems like Brooke is gonna become another member of the Permanents. Brooke really, really, really has a thing for another character whose name is Neo. We'll talk about him here in a second. Brooke and Cass are both Americans. Logan is Cass's fiance. He is a Scottish expat. We don't really know what he's running from. He left Scotland many, many years ago to come to Thailand because he didn't want to take over his family business or that's what we're led to believe. Greta is a Swedish expat. She left Sweden because no one approved of her relationship with Alice. So Greta is a lesbian. She's also the resident yoga instructor and obviously another member of the permanent. Doug, I think he was Australian. It's been a minute since I've read this book. I think that he was Australian. He kind of runs the island and the resort when the resort's owner, Frederick, is not around. It's really unclear why he left Australia. He's very much a dickhead. It like, he reads as a dickhead. He creeps on all of the female tourists. It's very, very weird. I didn't like him. He mm, rubbed me the wrong way from the start. Neil is the British expat. He's the resident freckled redhead and everybody loves him. Neil left the UK after attempting to take his own life. He is the man who all of the tourists crawl into bed with and he just so happens to be 
Doug's roommate. Alice is also another Swedish expat. She is Greta's girlfriend. We don't really hear a lot from Alice because she's left before the book picks up. What I will say is she kind of plays a minor role in the telling of this tale. And so I'm including her here because she plays that minor role. Frederick is a French expat. He's the owner of the resort and he's only around in this book when shit really hits the fan. We have a myriad of other like minor characters in this book, largely locals to the island and like a small group of tourists. They all play important roles in this book, but everybody that I've listed is kind of a key player in the telling of the story. Cass and Brooke are of course the two main characters, hence why we went over them first. I think overall we have a very well developed casting of characters. People from all over the world, various backgrounds are portrayed in this book, which I found to be very enjoyable. I thought that the characters were kind of lacking just a little in that we aren't focused so heavily on the descriptions of physical characteristics, but that's okay. It wasn't something that drove me crazy. In reflecting on like who I would cast in a film adaptation, I kind of struggled and I gave the characters an eight out of 10. We are set on like a small outlying island on Thailand. The physical descriptions of the setting really helped boost the atmosphere up. I felt very tense while reading this book and I feel like that also added to the atmosphere. I could visualize physical descriptions of the setting. So that's really good. So while I couldn't picture the characters, I definitely could picture the island and everything that goes on, like the water and the forestry and the mountains. I could even picture the resort. So I appreciated that about the atmosphere. I gave atmosphere eight out of 10. This is a debut novel, friends. I grant grace when I'm reading debut novels, or I try to when it comes to the writing, because I think that authors are really trying to find their voice in debut novels. This this was exceptionally well written when I take into consideration, of course, that it was a debut novel. Overall, I found that I enjoyed the author's style of writing and I will be on the lookout for another book from her. I did have moments where I was like, oh, rolling my eyes, but that's to be expected. I do that with anything, honestly. We're gonna keep that in mind. I gave the writing an eight out of 10. I could not for the life of me figure out what the fuck was happening for the longest time. I enjoyed that, but as we neared closer and closer closer to the end, I found myself wanting some sort of release from the tension that was building on the island. By the time we reach the 50% mark, you still have no idea what happens in Cass's past to make her leave the United States. And I still had no idea of who to suspect in the deaths, which I think is good. I don't really think that you find anything out about what's actually going on until about the 75% mark, which feels like a very long time. Despite all of that, I did very much enjoy this book up until the end. I did not enjoy the ending of this book at all. And so for that, I did take some points off, but otherwise I found the plot to be very enjoyable. I gave it a seven out of 10 for plot. The ending was just not it for me. For the most part, I did find this book to be really interesting. I was invested in the secrets that each character was keeping. So that kind of kept the interest alive for me. I wanted to know what secret everybody was holding. And I was really holding out until each character's backstory came out. I just found that it took kind of a long time to get there and it was all at once. It wasn't like we get Cass's backstory and then we get Brooke's backstory. It's like everybody's backstory comes out all at once. And I don't like that because I feel like it caused me to not be as interested at all times as you know it could have been. And I also very much lost interest at the end. I read a lot of this book on my flight to Washington DC. I didn't manage to finish it on the flight, but that's okay. I read the ending like right before I went to bed on my first night in the DC area. And I was like, you've gotta be kidding me. I was mad. Seven out of 10 for intrigue. I felt like a lot of things didn't make sense in this book and maybe that's just me. The decisions that the author made in character actions were decisions, I guess. I found the ending to be so incredibly unbelievable that I docked kind of a lot of points for logic. Brooke's choices felt very immature to me and I didn't find her to be the most logical of characters, but for Cass, I felt like her decisions made sense. But that's kind of where it stopped. Everybody else had 
questionable logic at best. I feel like logic is like heavy on the let me not spoil things. It's not even the plot where I'm like, oh, let me not spoil things. It's the logic that I'm finding most often where I'm like, oh, let me not talk too much about it because it's spoilery. Everybody else, questionable logic at best. Can't go into it because I'm trying not to spoil you. I gave it a six out of 10 for logic. Like I said, I read a huge chunk of this on my flight from Chicago to DC. I found my focus to be laser sharp on the plane because there was nothing else for me to do. I wasn't paying the 10 bucks for the Wi-Fi, so I was reading. There were absolutely no distractions. Six seats across and I was the only person sitting in my row. There were absolutely no distractions. While on land, didn't find myself reaching for this book very much. I took three days to read it because I started it before I left for DC with the intent to finish it before I went to DC and I did not meet that goal. I finished it, uh, like I said, the night that I got there. I was having a good time until the end. I just wasn't a fan of the end. So seven and a half out of 10 for enjoyment, which brings our totals to 51 and a half out of 70 with an average of 7.35 for my overall score, which brings the star rating for this book based off of my own little cop pile rating scale that I have there to be a 3.75 out of five stars, which is not bad for a debut novel. I've given debut novels worse scores than this in the past. So and that is it. Thanks for being here for my review of The Resort by Sarah Oaks. If you liked the video, feel free to like the video. Thanks for tuning in for my stupid opinion. If you are new here and you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. It is free for you and fun for me. Leave a comment down below if you have anything to add to the discussion. If you've read The Resort, I'd love to know your opinion, especially if it differs from mine. Let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you on my next video. Bye.